cam timing refers to the relationship of crankshaft rotation and piston position in the cylinder and when the intake and exhaust valves open and close. Proper cam timing is critical, not only for engine performance, but cams that are not timed correctly can result in major engine damage. The intake and exhaust valves can come in contact with each other when open, or the piston can hit the valves if they're opening too soon or closing too late. If you do your own maintenance, you will need to understand how to correctly set cam timing. The cams must be removed during many routine engine service procedures, such as adjusting the valve clearance or replacing the piston and rings. Set your YZ on a secure stand and remove the parts needed to get access to the valve cover following all the steps in your owner's service manual. Be sure to cover the ends of the fuel injection hoses to prevent contamination. Remove the valve cover and the large and small inspection plugs on the generator cover. Set the engine to top dead center on the compression stroke by rotating the engine counterclockwise and watching the intake cam lobe go down, which is opening the intake valves, and then start to come up. Keep rotating very slowly as you now look through the small inspection hole and stop when the top dead center mark on the rotor and the mark on the cover are directly lined up with each other. Check the timing marks on the intake and exhaust cam sprockets. They should be lined up with the valve cover gasket surface and the cam lobes for both cams should be facing inward like this. Now if you're familiar with cam timing on regular engines where the intake is at the rear, when these engines are at top dead center compression, the cam lobes are pointing outward, away from each other. But on reverse cylinder models, where the intake is at the front, the cam lobes will be facing inward. A double check on proper cam timing is the number of timing chain link pins between the cam sprocket dots. On reverse cylinder YZ250F and 450F models, there should be 27 pins. If you're checking valve clearance, which is called for at maximum every third race or seven and a half hours per the maintenance interval chart, follow the steps in the owner's service manual. If the clearance is out of spec for one of the valves, either too much clearance or not enough, or if you're inspecting or replacing other parts in the top end, we'll need to remove the cams to proceed. Loosen the timing chain tensioner cap before you remove the tensioner from the cylinder. Makes things easier when going back together. Remove and check the operation of the timing chain tensioner. You should check the operation of the tensioner every time you remove it. Now loosen the cam cap bolts in a crisscross pattern and remove the cam caps. Watch for the half circle locating clips. Make sure they don't fall into the crankcase when you remove the cam caps. And account for the two dowel pins on each cam cap. Attach a long zip tie to the timing chain to help pull it up if it falls into the crankcase. And lift the chain off the cam sprockets and remove the cams. The timing chains on modern high performance bikes are under a great load, especially when racing. We recommend closely inspecting the timing chain on the YZ250F and 450F every time you're checking the valve clearance. Pull up and support the chain so it doesn't bind on the crankshaft drive gear as you rotate the engine all the way around. Inspect each section of the chain, making sure each group of plates pivot freely and do not have excessive free play. Use a good light and a magnifying glass and look for cracks in the side plates around the pin and for cracks on the top of the plates. If you see any cracks or the chain has tight spots, replace it. A timing chain is not very expensive, especially compared to the damage caused by a chain breaking at high engine speed. Set the piston back to top dead center when complete. If you're adjusting valve clearance or replacing other top end parts like piston and rings, follow the steps in the owner's service manual. When you're ready to reassemble, apply a little motor oil to the pin and weight pivot for the exhaust cam auto decompression system and double check the decompressor pivots freely and snaps back before you install the cam. Apply some Yamalube oil to the cam bearing surfaces and a very light coating of Yamalube molybdenum disulfide grease on the cam lobes. Lay the cams into their respective spots and fit the timing chain onto both cam sprockets. The goal when setting cam timing is this. When the piston is at top dead center, the timing marks on the intake and exhaust cam sprockets should be lined up with the gasket surface and all the slack in the timing chain should be at the rear of the cylinder. Some cam sprockets will have more than one mark. As a double check to make sure you're using the correct marks, look at the cam lobes. As we mentioned before on reverse cylinder models, the cam lobes should be facing inward like this. Fit the timing chain onto the sprockets where it appears the timing marks will line up and set the cams into position on the head. Push in on the rear of the timing chain guide with your fingers and check that the top dead center mark is good and both cam marks align properly. Sometimes you'll need to remove the cams, move the chain one or more teeth forward or back on the sprockets and recheck. And again a double check on the proper cam timing is to count the number of timing chain link pins between the cam sprocket dots. There should be 27 pins on reverse cylinder YZ250F and 450F models. 
When you've got it all set correctly, you'll need to make sure the chain doesn't move or jump teeth before you get the cam caps properly torqued and the timing chain tensioner installed. Some cautions here. Do not turn the engine over while setting cam timing. You could bend a valve. You can turn the crankshaft a few degrees to align the top dead center mark, but only a few degrees in either direction. Also, do not try to turn the engine over until both cam caps and timing chain tensioner are properly installed. The timing chain will jump teeth on the cam sprockets. Install the locating clips in the cam caps, two dowel pins for each cap, and torque the bolts using the pattern marked on the top of the caps. Before we install the timing chain tensioner, it must be retracted. If you try to install the tensioner with the shaft extended, you will damage the tensioner or strip the mounting screw threads in the cylinder. Push in on the tensioner rod with your fingers and insert a thin flat blade screwdriver. Wind the tensioner rod inward clockwise until fully retracted. Install the tensioner with a new gasket and torque the bolts. Insert the screwdriver again and turn counterclockwise. You should hear the tensioner rod release as the spring extends the tensioner and now feel that there's tension on the timing chain. Make sure this happens before you go further. Now rotate the engine counterclockwise several times by hand. Bring the piston back to top dead center compression and recheck the cam timing and double check there are 27 pins between the cam sprocket dots. Now install the valve cover and reassemble the bike using your owner's service manual. Thanks for watching. Good luck at the races.